Welcome to Oregon Outdoors, I'm Mark Freeman. Now, we're out here at Point St. George Reef, and this is exactly why we're here. Some of the best bottom fishing you can have in the lower 48 in the Pacific, and I'm about to show you why. Here we go. <laughs> there you go, Mark. What a way to start the day, huh? Like I say, this is why we're here. This is why we live here. Fishing around California's Point St. George Lighthouse is incredible because the reef is loaded with fish. You know, these rocks that were so dangerous to mariners are gold for anglers. You just never know what you're going to pull up from the bottom. All the colors of the underwater rainbow show up in the fish here. There's big tasty halibut and even hitchhiking lingcod who think they can pick off a black rockfish and get away with it. Oh, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! So we leave out of the port of Brookings Harbor and set our sights south just over the California border to the Point St. George Reef. It's a 40 minute run on the Kraken, one of six boats in the Brookings Fishing Charters fleet that regularly hits this reef around this historic lighthouse. The lighthouse rises about 140 feet above a surly ocean compounded many days by big surf and stiff currents. Strangely, the fishing pressure is light despite its immense productivity. So Michael, what makes this place so special? You know, Mark, it's, it's a really unique fishery in the sense that it's in between two ports, so it's, it's very difficult to get to. It's not just two ports. It's two ports on two different, across the state line. So all the people from Crescent City come up and they fish the south side of the reef. So the few of us that motor down from Oregon fish the north side of the reef. So you, you kind of have half of this reef to yourselves, basically. T typically, we even have the majority of the reef to ourselves. We're fortunate that we can come out here and have this whole area to, our, to ourselves. I mean, you see, there's not a single boat out here. We're looking to catch every color on the rockfish chart, right? That, that's our goal today, <laughs> yep. So we're talking black rockfish. Yep. Tigers. Tigers, hopefully tigers, vermilions. Vermilion. Um, big lean cod. Yeah. All right, let's stop talking about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, guys. Here. Oh, you have a canary. canary is so we're staying away from these. Yep. So this right here, we have to do what's called a deep water release on this fish. ODFW, they gave us this release device, and all it does, it just clips right on the fish like that. It's got a rubber band holding it. And all you're gonna do is just put the fish in the water like that, open your reel and send them down. I like to send them down all the way to the bottom. People will stop short, but I think it's better to get them down right where you hooked them. This keeps the swim bladder from uh, blowing them up because he can't descend on his own, but once he gets down to that, that heavy pressure down there, his, his whole body's gonna retain its whole form. And So you just give it a couple of yanks and then it comes off. Then you just reel it right on up. See? All right. Comes up with no rockfish. <laughs> Big, big one. Try to back, back up the boat a little bit. Yeah. Oh, oh man! Oh, oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Check out that hook. It's going through both fish. Yep. That is lucky. Oh! Big one. So what happened here was Brent had this little rockfish on and when he had this little rockfish on he just kind of left it down there dangling near the bottom and that's when this big big lingcod ate the rockfish and he was fortunate enough to land them. We call those hitchhikers. Probably a 20 pound lingcod. That was a big one. When you're fishing the Point St. George Reef, you're not only fishing on big clouds of rockfish, 
You're fishing around nautical history. The lighthouse is on the Northwest Seal Rock. It's on the line of the so-called Dragon Rocks, named by explorer Sir Francis Drake after numerous shipwrecks here. But none of those were more famous or more history changing than the wreck of the brother Jonathan on July 30th, 1865. You history buffs might remember the brother Jonathan as that paddle steamer that first brought smallpox to Vancouver Island in 1862. And that triggered the pandemic that wiped out many of the Northwest native people. But three years later, it was overloaded with 244 passengers and crew, as well as a large shipment of gold valued today at roughly $50 million. They're headed from San Francisco to Portland, but it struck an uncharted rock. It was pretty close to here that the brother Jonathan hit an uncharted rock, sank, and killed all but 19 people. It was so rough out here that the shipwreck wasn't even discovered until 1963. And some of the gold was salvaged in 1969. It also made a huge impact because of some of the people who died. The victims included Brigadier General George Wright. Now, he was a Union commander who was going to take over the Department of the Columbia. Then there was Dr. Anson Henry. He was a surveyor and Abraham Lincoln's personal physician and good friend. Oh, and one of the fan favorites was Rosanna Keenan. She was this real well-known madam from San Francisco, heading her way to Portland. <laughs> so almost instantly, there was a call to build a lighthouse out here, and they chose this rock. But as you can see, it's a pretty tough place to build a lighthouse. The lighthouse and the caretaker's residence are on a rock. So on top of the rock, they built a 50-foot foundation for the lighthouse and the caretaker's residence. And the whole thing soars about 144 feet tall. It's on just 1.6 acres of rock, and it's one of the most exposed lighthouses in all the Pacific coast. That's why it was built to look like a medieval fortress. It, it took forever because of funding, but it finally came online in 1892 at the cost of $752,000. That's the most expensive lighthouse ever built in the United States. Because of where it sits among all these rocks and the crazy currents in here, this thing takes a beating from water on all four sides. The storms here are crazy. One in 1952 actually broke the windows out of the lantern room. It's 150 feet above sea level. The water rushed down the staircase. Could you believe that? It was finally decommissioned in 1975. It was replaced by a lighthouse buoy. But it was relit in 2012, and you can see it all the way in Crescent City and Brookings. And that's the thing about this, this reef, it's just loaded. Loaded with a little bit of everything. And we're gonna to try to catch every color spectrum of the rockfish chart today. Oh, there he is. Good job. Look at that thing. <laughs> This is why we're here. <laughs> you got a, got a big vermilion. Big vermilion. He's a good eating fish. Very good eating fish. There you go. That is a beautiful eating fish. It is. No, the halibut, the halibut. I know. That's like a 40 pounder. Well, on that note, Michael, I think it's time to run home. <laughs> Boom, dude. <laughs>